Have you ever wondered where you really stand with God? Are you overcome with feelings of guilt because of things you've done wrong? Are you tired of religion that focuses on rules that you can't keep? Have we got good news for you? It's time to listen in on some casual conversation with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski and discover what true freedom is all about. This is Growing in Grace. Welcome once again to Growing in Grace. My name's Joel, and I got Mike Kapler with me. They call him the Cap, they call me the Breeze. It's Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. Hope things are going well with you, Mr. Kapler. Everything is going fine, Joel. i uh, got some changes going on in life, but we're looking forward to them. And uh, forward ho, as they say. As long as you're not going through the change. <laughs> the change. Was, that, that, Edith, from... was that, yeah. that Edith Bunker? <laughs> yeah. Okay. Hey, I, I, I guessed it. I got it right. It was a pretty bad impersonation, but you did get it. Uh, actually, you do Edith better than you think. <laughs> oh, I'm not going to do it again. That's all I know. <laughs> that was a uh, memorable episode, anyway. Of yes, the, uh, that's Archie when she Bunker was going show. through mental in the pause, family, as Archie yeah. called it. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> That was a good show. I loved all Archie. <laughs> you know, it's funny you brought that up because uh, you know how I like to watch classic TV shows before I go to bed at night, right? Yeah. So I was going to get the entire series. I hadn't really thought about that one before, but I, it, it was on sale on Amazon. And I thought it was good all week long, and it went up like 40 bucks oh, wow. before before I bought it. So I'll have to wait for it to go back down again. But. Yeah. Yeah, I know. you got to watch those things. My son wanted something for... Uh, Christmas and it was regularly three hundred bucks and it was on sale for seventy. Mm. It was some headphones and I missed it. Um, Ouch! It's like one hundred and sixty nine or something like that now. So anyway, yeah, you got to mm. watch those things. Yeah. Well, hey, um, last week we were talking about the nature of grace and how God freely gives, and we want to continue that thread, although we want to expand it and and go further. As we examine the, the very nature, the very substance of grace, we talk a lot about it, grace that is, but there's probably so much to it that we'll never understand, not only in this lifetime, Joel, but I believe personally that eternity is, is a place where we're, we're going to constantly be learning. I don't think you ever just reach the place where you know it all, uh, even after you leave the earth. Yeah, no, I think you're absolutely right. I uh, talk all, all the time about how I just, and I think we've probably mentioned it a lot on our program too, how we only think we're just skimming the tip of the iceberg when it comes to all this uh, understanding of grace and growing in grace. And that's really a good place to be, I think, because uh, with grace, and, and one of the things we'll talk about today anyway, I, I don't know if I want to skip right to it or not, but one thing that does come along with grace is the fact that it causes humility in a person, because a person knows that God is so big, and His grace and His love is so huge, I can't even begin to understand it all, and there's nothing I can do to deserve it, and uh, it just causes a person to be humble in front of, not only in front of God, but in front of other people as well, knowing that, hey, I've got no stones to throw at anybody. <laughs> it's the, I didn't deserve this. There's nothing I did to deserve this grace of God. And um, he, he has freely given it to us, as we talked about last week. Yeah, and you know, it's, it's funny because you would think that grace might almost have the opposite effect with the way people think of grace. But I, I can relate to that because when I came um, years ago, Joel, back in the mid-90s, when I, I came into a, a much better understanding of what the gospel really is and began walking down Grace Road, humility became something that overwhelmed me. Now, sometimes I joke around. I don't always act all that humble, but that's just, a, that's just an act. <laughs> um, I'm just, but, but inside, I, I, just, I just had this, uh, I just felt so humbled because I suddenly realized this had nothing to do with me and the, the love that was so unconditional in spite of myself. Boy, that was, uh, it, it was not only a relief, but it, but it, was, uh, it was a phenomenal thing to experience, that, that kind of humility that true grace can bring to people who experience it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because, I mean, I've seen the opposite, and I've probably been the opposite of that in my own Christian life. During those times when I felt that I was doing pretty well in my Christian life, and I wasn't attributing anything to grace, but rather to 
man, I'm I'm performing this Christian life pretty well in and of my uh, myself, in my own ability. And a person can get kind of haughty or proud, uh, but grace, <laughs> my goodness, does quite the opposite of that. The humility that comes with grace, it's based upon, it's, it's not contrived. A person, you know, like you were joking around just now about acting humble, but true humility that, that comes from grace can't be contrived. You can't really fake r- true humility, but really it's the thing that you know within yourself how apart from God's grace you're absolutely unworthy to receive anything from God. In other words, you hadn't done anything to earn it. We know that we can't do anything to earn God's grace and his love. There's nothing in our deeds. There's nothing in our in the way we act. There's nothing in the way that we um, pretty ourselves up for God or anything like that that can cause him to, uh, to give us his grace. And, and so as we realize that more and more, a natural humility just kind of takes over. And it's really a restful and peaceful place to be, I think. Yeah, once you realize that you have the inability to attain the worthiness of God, you, you, you can't do it yourself, no matter how hard you try. And he's okay with that because he has blessed us outside of ourselves and in Christ. And so that's, that's a, a good place to be because, um, because again, the, the covenant is, is between the Father and, and the Son, and we're just, we're just recipients of it. We, we're, we're heirs according to that promise. I just want to cut in on something that you're saying there. He's okay with that. That is... That might have just went past a lot of people, and sometimes that would have gone right by me, but that stood out to me when you just said that. God is okay with that. God is okay with us as we are. He's okay with wherever we're at in life because it's his grace that is carrying us anyway. So when we... uh Realize, when we realize that we can't do anything to attain his worthiness, as you just said there, when we, f- when we find ourselves blessed and uh, we're living in that blessedness, God loves that. Some people, I think, feel guilty when they feel worthy. You know what I'm saying? They, they, <laughs> they, they feel like, I haven't done anything to earn this, and so how could I feel so blessed? How could I feel worthy when I haven't done anything? But yet, the person who you know, finds himself really, truly realizing that grace was not deserved or earned, but God lavished us with his grace. That, you know, that, God's great with that. God loves that. When we think highly of ourselves the way that he does, not more highly of ourselves than we ought to, as Paul said, but when we think highly of ourselves because he himself has made us worthy. Well, yeah, I mean, it kind of goes back to what we were talking about last week, where where God freely gave the spirit of the world uh, would make us work to get. Uh, The spirit that comes from God is the opposite of that, where uh, we, we can understand the things that have been freely given to us by God. That's why he gave us his spirit. And so that's, uh, that's the beauty of this whole thing. In fact, something else you said in, in that last couple of minutes here, Joel, was that, that grace does it all. I mean, it, it's absolute. It doesn't add to anything. So whether you feel like you're somebody who is a nobody or you're not doing anything or whether you feel like you're somebody who has just been on top of the world with your faith and your spiritual actions, that isn't where grace moves. Grace moves in, in this place of humility and realizing that there isn't anything that we can do to attain the worthiness of God. And so grace is everything. It doesn't add to anything. It's not, a, it's not a support mechanism of some kind. It does it all. Everything is wrapped around grace. Yeah, like I don't come to God and say, okay, God, here's, here's what I have to offer. Here's my ability uh, Lord, bless my ability. Lord, bless my efforts, as I've heard in the church a lot. It's, but it's nothing like that. God doesn't bless our efforts or our abilities. God does it all. We walk with him in what he's doing, and we get to partake in what he's doing. And that's a great thing. That's a, a benefit of grace, partaking in what God is doing. But it's God who's doing it all along. He's, he's not helping us He's doing it, and we're <laughs> kind of walking with him. I think that's one of, of the big things that has helped me in my understanding of grace and walking in it, uh, just to understand that, all right, I come to God. I don't bring my 
stuff to God and say, here, God, you know, let's, let's do this with, with what I've got. But he says, here, Joel, here's what I've got. You partake in what I'm doing, and I'm glad to have you on this ride with me, Joel. You know, that's what I hear God saying. And, and then I just walk with him, and his grace does it all. I think that right there, you know, is part of that humility as well. Well, it is, and that brings us to a place where there is no reason why grace was shown to us or, or given to us. And so we as people of God, we, we as human beings, we, we got to get away from the idea that we can give God a reason for him to give us his grace because there's just no reason for God to give cause. We talked about that last week, that grace is uncaused. Some people think that grace will somehow move more fluidly and fluently if we do the right things to allow it to, to free it up. It's almost like, well, if we do the wrong things, we'll, we'll damn, D-A-M, we'll damn the, the, the flow of grace. We'll block it. And that, that's not the case at all. Again, grace is, is given freely, and there's just no cause for God to give it to us other than his desire to do so because he, he chose to do it, and he did it out of love. Yeah, you know, you know one, of my, one of my favorite sayings in life is, it is what it is. You know, when stuff happens in life, sometimes you can deal with it. Sometimes there's something you can do about it. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. But I always conclude it is what it is. Well, in kind of a different way, grace is, it just is what it is. Like you were saying, there's nothing that we have ever done to cause grace. There's nothing that we can ever do to cause God to give us grace, because God's grace is what it is. It is already there. God's grace is part of who he is. It's not something that, well, we fell, you know, mankind fell, and so, well, I guess I need to show them grace. I need to come up with a way to take care of things, and so I'm going to come up with this idea called grace. But no, I mean, grace has always been a part of who God is. We didn't do anything to get him, you know, to cause him to come up with grace. There were no conditions that we had to fulfill in order for God to show grace. God just shows grace toward whoever he wants to and however he pleases to do it. And uh, often you'll find the, the people that we think are the uh, least worthy, the people who deserve favor the least, are the ones who you will find with, you'll find them being favored. And that's because that's what grace does. Grace doesn't look for the person who deserves it the most, and really, it doesn't look for the whoever deserves it the least. It just is. Grace just is what it is. And coming up next week, more about that. Does God give grace only to those who would seemingly deserve it? Or is his grace unconditional? And also, is there a... Uh, a trial period, you know, when you come into God's grace. Is he waiting to see what you're going to do? And then if you don't do it right, he's going to withdraw his grace or what? How does that work? We're going to talk about that next week. So stay close. It's Growing in Grace at growingingrace.org. This has been Growing in Grace with Mike Kapler and Joel Brzezinski. Heard online through various internet sources around the world each week. To access hundreds of past programs, visit graceroots.org. Share it with a friend and listen again next week for more Growing in Grace.